Hello and welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about something rather interesting, and I'm joined by my friend here, Fairman. Hello. And we're going to be talking about the new upcoming potential, we, I'm not 100% sure whether it's going to happen or not, Command & Conquer Remaster. So before we delve into what kind of stuff we have questions for you guys, and we have some polls, we're going to actually read the uh, statement submitted on the Reddit post, which you can find the link in the description along with all the other news sites, uh, citation in the description as well. So, to start off, it's a post made by EA. Uh, it starts off with fellow Command & Conquer fans. My name is Jim Vasella, and I am a producer at Electronic Arts. Ten years ago, I had the pleasure of being on the production team for Command & Conquer 3 and Red Alert 3, along with being the lead producer of Kane's Wrath. During those years, some of my favorite moments were interacting with our passionate community, whether at our community summits, on the forums, or while attending various events such as Game Gamescom. Pardon. As some of, as most of you may know, we recently announced Command and Conquer Rivals, a mobile game set in, command, in the Command and Conquer universe. Following the reveal of Rivals, we heard you loud and clear. As they, they kind of heard us bitch and squeal, so that's what they're talking about there. The Command and Conquer community also wants to see the, the franchise return to PC. Well, yeah, no shit. And as a fan of CNC for over 20 years, I couldn't agree more. With that in mind, we've been exploring some exciting ideas regarding remastering the classic PC games and already have a ball rolling on our first effort to celebrate the upcoming 25th year anniversary. We are eager to hear your feedback to help influence our current thoughts for PC and what comes next over the next few weeks. We'll be talking with fans in a variety of ways. In the meantime, please share your thoughts here on the Reddit, uh, the subreddit, which I encourage you all to use that as well to let them know your thoughts or your rage or whatever. Uh, as a long time CNC fan and developer, I am just as passionate about the CNC franchise as you are. Uh, and look forward to hearing your thoughts as they help us make the future of CT with EA. Thanks, Jim Vasella. Yeah, Jim Trim. All right, so basically, you know, it's... They're like, all right, we kind of want to revive the franchise. We kind of stepped in it with the CNC Rivals thing. Uh, nobody seemed to be really happy about that. And so the next question we need to ask ourselves is, they're going to be remastering CNC. Well, because it's the 25th anniversary, I'm pretty sure, and Fairman, you're also pretty sure that... Tiberian Dawn or Red Alert 1 will be the two things that I think will get remastered. They are certainly the ones that need it most. They're, they're the ones that have aged the, the least well. The old CNCs are not good to go back to. I mean, they're still fun, but you go back and you play those Command & Conquers versus the newer ones, like Red Alert 2, newer-esque. A Red Alert 2, you know, where the franchise begins to improve drastically and change into its own formula. Even Tiberian Sun is relatively decent, uh, but it, that one still is, you know, it's got some missing components here and there. And it was never properly finished, a uh, bit of a shame, because they never finished the, some some of the factions that they were going to add to some of their games, but hey, details. Now, they said they're not going to be putting any loot boxes or microtransactions. Now, that's a bold claim, and we'll see from EA, and we have seen in the past with Battlefield Five that they are... It seems like they're backtracking after the whole start of Battlefront 2 escapade with the microtransaction loot box uh, nonsense. So they're kind of backpedaling a little bit, you know, maybe gonna stay away from loot boxes or microtransactions as a whole, as they said in the subreddit. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, now, they do want our opinion on the new Command & Conquer remaster. Now, they don't really specify what, Fairman. Uh, so what do you think? they kind of are looking for, for an opinion. Or do you know it all? Did I lose you, Fairman? I think I did. Fairman's computer tends to do that. Either way, that's kind of funny. But, I think, personally, the Command & Conquer that they're... What they're asking is, they're asking, like, what kind of things we want changed? What kind of mechanics? Do we want it modernized? Do we want the UI changed? Improved audios? Improved visuals? Or do we want the ability to, like in the newer Halos, be able to switch back and forth between, you know, remastered and classic feel? Uh, there's also the possibility that, you know, perhaps they're going to revitalize the servers. Because that's one thing that uh, is a huge flaw with the old Command Conquerors. Not only do they not run on modern operating systems, or they struggle to and require some serious 
workarounds, which you can find in another link in the description at cncnet.org, I believe. Uh, and that has some fixes to get the old Command & Conquers to run. Now, what is going to be changed in terms of, like, these Command & Conquers? The next question we need to ask ourselves, are we going to see different rebalancing? Are we going to see, um, uh, visual... Are we going to see visual changes, like UI changes, perhaps uh, buttons, like uh, the waypoint function, or the attack move function in the newer Command & Conquer games? Which kind of helped modernize how they could play and, you know, change up the way they played quite a bit. Uh, the next thing we also need to ask ourselves is modability. Will these new Command & Conquers be as moddable? There you are, Fairman. Take it your PC shut down again on you, didn't it? Well, yes. Okay. Well, we're still going. So I'm talking about mods right now. So modding tools. What do you think? Well, can't hurt. I think a, a new robust set of modding tools, because we've seen things like Amazing come out of the Red Alert 2 franchise, along with the other Command & Conquers, but none more notable than Red Alert 2 and Tiberian Sun with uh, Mental Omega and Twisted Insurrection being pretty predominant titles, or to predominant mods, I should say. I mean, Twisted Insurrection actually had Frank Lepacki doing um, some remasters. Yes, uh, and it has some pretty cool music in it from Frank Lepacki. I which, also would bring me to, which also would bring me to one of my most important points. Don't really touch the mu music. Maybe touch it up a bit. Um, oh yeah, they did that with Halo remasters. Do yeah, don't yeah. don't fuck do with the music. music get frankly, Jepeki. You can not do a original and fan service Command and Conquer without him. There are two names that are very well known in the Command and Conquer community. And that are basically important for a classic feel, Koma Konka, and that would be Joe Kukin and Frank Pepeki. Yep, you need both of them. You need Joe Kukin for Kane, and you need um, you need Frank Pepeki for the music. Without them, you know, you're going to struggle. Hell, even get Joe's brother, right? That's the other actor, if I remember right. He had played the... Um, some roles, yes. If you played some roles, but have him cameo as well. He'd be a nice touch-up. If they if do they, do a new Command Conquer, because... Videos. Yep, I imagine this is a prelude to a new Command & Conquer. I I think what they're doing, if they're going to remaster it, I, either they're either doing this for two things. To turn a quick buck. Actually, no, possibly three things. To turn a quick buck, to do some, perhaps, PR fixing from the amount of times they've stepped in it. It's a good move on their part. Or perhaps third, they're rebooting the franchise, which is also a good idea because it, it turns a new leaf. Now, EA, as we all know has made some spectacular games, and they've made some rather bad games, and some rather poor decisions. So, I think, hey, well, the go thing ahead. is with the A, they can deliver. We all know they can deliver if they want, which oh, they God, really yes. do. They've delivered spectacular games in the past. And the problem is, is they are in a rut again, where they are just spinning in the shit, and they've done this, what? They, done, they did this before uh, the early 2000s, 2007 was a, like the EA Golden Age we had for a while, where we were getting all sorts of great games out of them. And then they went back into that fucking rut and they've been stuck there ever since. Just spinning, not really producing anything innovative or interesting, or good for that matter. Most notably, Dead Space 3 and Command and & Conquer Tiberium Twilight were some of the Ugh. egregious sinners, along with the Metal, o Metal Last Metal of Honor they made the Modern Warfighter, I think. That one wasn't that good either, I didn't play that very much. But, I think I played the first one on that one. Medal of Honor is a good franchise. Well, it was a <laughs> good franchise. Like many things with EA. Like Star Wars Battlefront, Pandemic uh, Studios. The guys who made uh, the original Star Wars Battlefront. The guys who made the second Star Wars Battlefront. Pretty good guys. But in terms of EA, now is a huge chance for them to reboot the franchise. This is If they're going to go down this path, you know, make it as true to the original. Do not... And I swear to God, do not try to do that thing you did with Tiberium Twilight, where you're trying to reach out and grab that MOBA audience. That's not where the money is. You want the money, you want the loyal fans, the fans who will spread the game and make it good. You need to go back to your roots. They need to go up to the roots, but they also need to not be original. Because we've seen companies, splinters groups, uh, survivors, quote unquote, of, uh, of Westwood uh, or uh, Victory Games, uh, or EA Los Angeles, as they'd later be called. Oh, Petroglyph. Yeah, but Petroglyph try to continue to make Command & Conquer games, or Command & Conquer games like 8-Bit Armies or Grey Goo, and they just don't carry that kind of weight. 
they don't they're, they're not innovative they don't improve on the the formula the thing is every command and conquer was always improving on the formula of the last one it didn't change it didn't do what Tiberium Twilight did which was spit all over the franchise but <laughs> and by just not being a command and conquer game at all they, they they took the formula and they added a new element like uh, Tiberian Sun added chevrons units could level up and gain rank it also added some destructible features, which you'd see again in Red Alert 2, and improved with secondary unit abilities, and a sort of waypoint system that was kind of unusable was added to the game. And you'd see it improve in the next one, Generals, with the, you know, the attack move function. Not to forget about the other non-heard of strategy games, like uh, the... Now, the attack move function actually was um, in Red Alert 2 already. Yeah, it was kind of... It was just convoluted. Uh, it's kind of crap. I don't like to think about it because half the time my units just don't listen to me. They just run off and kill themselves anyway, <laughs> without shooting back. But don't forget, yeah, Red Alert Two that one was weird. They the also was good, though. they also made the Battle for Middle Earth series and the Dune uh, strategy game series, which quick reminder, Dune Two, if I believe right, was the sort of beginning of where Command and Conquer would take place, inspired off of that work. Don't forget Battle for Middle Earth. Battle for Middle Earth is also a really good, good game that they pumped out, and then they pumped out some other strategy game spin-offs yeah, that were pretty good. What was it? Star Wars Empire. Oh, that's Petroglyph. Oh. Yeah, Pe oh, yeah, Petroglyph was Petroglyph. more remnants from Westwood and Victory Games. They went off, and that was the last strong title they released. Then they think things like Universe at War and some other trash that sucks, and they've not. They've been kind of crap ever since. I say ideally, if you want to do a. Um, if we were try to get these guys up board. Um, you need to. Re they need to rebuild as much of the old team as possible. Yeah. I doubt they're going to be able to get Petroglyph, and again, that'd be stepping on toes, especially if they start going to like, hey, you want to join the team? That would start but to kick up a whole drama Pet nest. Petroglyph is on record for saying if they, if EA would approach them for a new Comic Conquer, they would be more than happy to do this. My question now is: if Petroglyph competent enough to produce one? Let's be honest yeah. here. Yeah, that's the question. Petroglyph has produced some good games and a lot of bad games lately. I.e. Universe at War or, you know, even Star Wars uh, Empire at War had its troubles as well. So, while I, I think they should bring them on because the additional support would be grand, uh, to have some of the old team back, they could sort of spitball. But the next thing is, are they stuck in the past? That's the next thing. You need, you need the series to grow and to improve. It can't just be stuck in the same old path that it was because that's stagnation. Stagnation leads to, you know, un, just a, a, death, a dead franchise. We need innovation, but we need it in a new way. And we don't need it in a new way like Tiberium fucking Twilight. Oh, God. That was a new way that was just... That was a cancerous sort of resurgence of Command & Conquer Soul Survivor, the fucking MOBA piece of shit. Oh, cancer. What a terrible idea. There's a reason why Soul Survivor flopped, and that was a good reason at that. To be fair, it was a bit, uh, nowadays it probably would be a bit more successful because it technically is a boss a battle royale. Yeah, it's true. Nowadays, it's one of the first battle royales. It's kind of an interesting thing. Another thing, if they're going to redo and remaster the classic type Command Conquers, they need to, I think they definitely, in personal opinion now, they need to implement... Uh, mechanics and sort of modernizations like uh, attack move functionality, waypoint systems, queuing, because uh, the queue system did not Definitely. exist in some of the earlier ones. Oh god, when they added the queue system and fucking Tiberian Sound, except it only went up to five, it was like, why? The thing is, when I was alive, because I was born in 1994, like the first Command and Conquer I played was the first one, right? But the, I'd already seen Red Alert 2. Because I saw my pops play it, and I was like, oh my god, that looks cool, and then I started having seizures from that game. <laughs> I grew out of them, but that was an interesting time. <laughs> um, yeah, but we need oh, to see... the game had some special... Oh, go ahead. The game had some special uh, things, like if, like that sound it was not differentiating where you were. So the guy on the other end of the map fired his machine gun, you heard it. Yeah, you heard it, whatever. And that's the, that's, that's the next question, actually. So if we have remastered graphics and remastered audio, I'm kind of hoping that we can see... Oh, hold on a sec. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm kind of hoping we see 
different sort of visual and audio stuff. Oh god, where was I Fairman? I kinda just fucking spaced it. I say make it, if possible, very customizable. So let's say, yeah, switch to the old audio engine or a um, simulation of it. Yes, so basically you can customize your game on the go between um, classic gameplay completely and new and improved version and then maybe in between new graphics old gameplay and uh, mix it around like yep so you can switch out the audio and the visuals for remastered or old and i'm kind of hoping we'll see remastered cinematics if they've got the old footage and they can sort of clean that up that would be nice yeah. because it's fucking tiny if you try playing it and uh, I did reference while you were away that cncnet.org is the place you get the fixes to get them to work, the old ones, right? That's the place. Yeah, that's where I got my fixes, I remember. That's sort of how I got my old CNC's all running, I believe, I yeah, think. Most, most CNC net is pretty much the biggest one. There's also CNC online for some of the newer games. Yep, that CNC online works too. Yes, there's a 3D one, basically. Yep. I'm also kind of hoping we see the engine improved. So if they ever decide to go back and, you know, I'm assuming it's only going to be the old Command Conquerors. Again, we have a, we are going to have two polls. One poll will be for what commanders, Command and Conquerors would you like to see remastered, just out of a hypothetical question. And that includes all of them, pretty much. Uh, all the major ones and the ones that were unfinished that had some hype behind them. Uh, it even includes Command & Conquer 4, but I think if anybody checkmarks that, they're basically asking for Command & Conquer 4 to either be scrubbed from history, or to perhaps be, you know, redone from the ground up. Because that was supposed to be the conclusion, that was fucking terrible. I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be completely averse to a, uh, how do you call it, a relaunch of the series. Yeah, I, I'm actually more... A remaster's great and all. Like, I'd love them to remaster all of them, at least make them workable and improve the UI and the buttons and sell it as a package deal. I'll pay fucking hand. I'll pay quite a bit. Add mo add good modding tools for our mod mod boys and I'll fucking double that. But the thing is, I mean, oh, go ahead. I, I mean, I say um, let, let's go if we are talking about the completely rebooting the franchise. Um, make the first ones um, up to the second one, like um, in terms of red alert, um, have the classical idea of Red Alert turns later on into the Tiberium um, universe. Maybe experiment with that because that idea always was fun. Oh yeah, the Red Alert was the backstory to the Tiberium Basically Wars. Basically declare everything up with the third and Tiberium Wars, which was a good game, so it's not that I dislike that game, or uh, and Red Alert 3, a game which I actually like, but I have mixed feelings about Red Alert 3. It went yeah. so silly. Like, Red Alert 2 was classy. Red Alert 3 was like, hey, I have a little bit of autism. And I'm like, I love you, but calm down, miss. Um, I mean, or just keep it separate and basically make it so because when we have already um, a timeline and time travel thing with Red Alert. So basically make it so, yeah, Red Alert is splitting in two and you still have the alternative Red Alert. That's more of a more down of a yeah. reboot path but if they do yeah. do the reboot yeah i'm thinking you know reboot the franchise would be so much cooler if they kick it off reboot it with tiberian dawn like the first tiberian war then the sequel red alert one but you know make it so red alert one's a prequel to you know tiberium dawn and then it, you can build up this big you know like release like a mini expansion for fucking tiberium dawn and it'd be like you know It'll introduce the Wolverine. Remember that cinematic that introduced the Wolverine and fucking Tiberian Sun's opening? That was yeah, so fucking that's cool. The, yeah, the wonky. It was lovely. It was like wobble wobble. <laughs> wobble wobble, motherfucker. Oh my god. You knew, knew that Yuri from Red Alert was actually meant to be an apostle of Kane. Um, because basically, but didn't EA uh, retcon that so that it was split? So Tiberium and Red Alert timelines were separate. Yeah, but that one was planned. So basically the first one he was trying to use Stalin in the Soviet Union and in the second one he tried a bit more sneaky approach by using Yuri and the Soviet Union. Yeah. Oh man, if they remaster this. Oh my god. Like, that's just cool because it's not such a fucking pain in the ass to get it to work anymore. <laughs> oh man, and dude, server support, we need that shit. I'm not... I don't really want them to mess with the balancing too. I just want modding to be a capability. A lot of customization, skirmish options, etc. You know, make it, make it good. Improve that audio. 
fucking give me Honestly, some glorious death screams. I say get in contact with some of the modders, modders from um, what's it called, um, Metal Omega from what's it called, Dawn of TVMH. Uh, yeah, no, no, definitely communicate with the community because these guys, these modders are fucking amazing. Command and Conquer would not have the cult following it did if it weren't for the modders. The modders have actually kept the franchise, in my opinion, alive for the longest time, thanks to them. Because I keep going, I find myself still thinking about it because I'm like, I go to ModDB all the time to mod out my shit, and I'm like, oh my god, look, another Command & Conquer fucking mod. Oh my god. It just keeps on going, you know? I mean, we probably don't have to talk about me and mods because I am on notice for being a huge Metal Omega fan. Yeah, I know you are. You're a weeb. I you and your fucking obsession with that one fucking white-haired girl. Who's a little psychotic. I'm not obsessed. Obsessed is an understatement. I'm only obsessed. I'm only obsessed <laughs> with Yuri. And if yeah, there were body them. pillows, Fairman would own them. <laughs> That's what he really should be saying. No, I would have a Yuri body pillow. A Yuri body pillow? That's disgusting. Yes, you know what? Fuck it. I would like to see... As additional merchandise available for sale for Command and Conquer, the IP, I tell you what, make a body pillow. A body pillow of like the main antagonist, like Yuri, Stalin, uh, K. K, yeah, K for good joke. That means you gotta map that body, you can be like, hey, we need to strip him to a speedo, and he's gonna be like, no. Or no, he's an actor, he'd be comfortable with it, right? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Man, Joe is cool. Probably, he did some weird stuff. I remember like being a kid and being like, one day, one day I'm gonna have Joe in like a movie if I ever make a movie. I would. That'd be so cool. He's one of my favorite actors because I remember him from my childhood, like a little kid playing on the shitty Sega Saturn, playing Command Conquer and being like, look, Joe just shot this fucking underling dude. Wasn't that his brother, Seth? No, Seth was his number two. No, but was the actor his brother? No, that wasn't his brother. Uh, no, no, the, the, the actor's brother um, did... I get them mixed up. Uh, he made one uh, field commander in the first, if I recall right. Like. He wasn't the second one, it's the brother of um, Jake McNeil. So oh, you have Jake McNeil, and then you <laughs> capture him, and then fucking the blonde lady's like all sexy to him, like, Hey, and baby. In Red <laughs> Alert, uh, sorry, Red Alert. Uh, and in Kane's Rev, he was the state of talent commander. Steel Talons, Commander. Ah, oh, Steel Talons were cool. You want to know why? Because they had the fucking Titans and the Wolverines and, and the, the Max and shit. <laughs> they going stompy, stompy, right on the I little like nod. I like the explanation why Max actually were faced out of the universe. What was that? Why were they? I, I actually like the explanation why Max got faced out. Well, um, mechs, to be honest, are impractical, but I think they're fucking cool. Yeah, they figured this one out because Nod was basically just sending a suicide to Bombers with and C4 to attack the leg, which turned out to be very effective. <laughs> That's kind of retarded. But, but I sense. didn't know that was actually a lore explanation as to why Command & Conquer 3, you saw the uh, Titans and Wolverines disappear. Yep. I think the Wolverine wasn't that... Um, well, the Wolverine was anti-infantry. Technically, uh, and Not to delve too much into the lore, we gotta stay topical. All right, one other thing I want to see them do, not only reboot the goddamn franchise, but give us that goddamn tactical RTS shooter, or action RTS. I would kill. I would kill Tiberium? for the abuse. Yeah, Tiberium. Like, it's like Renegade, but you could, oh my god, you could like command and build, or you could have a commander player, and then the special forces players go around the map and fucking blow shit up. That would be so cool. That would be cancer. It would be actual cancer. I just thought about gameplay mechanics-wise, how that would actually function. The, uh, either A, the fucking players would just get spammed with fucking, like, attack dogs or some bullshit. <laughs> oh. I like the idea. You have, have the strategy player that can assign a unit, and then the um, action player can just jump in and take over that unit. Make it could it be such a cool cooperative uh, idea. PvE, even. Fighting the screen or something. Yeah, I mean, it would make an interesting um, cooperative campaign. Oh my god, I want Command & Conquer to be revived now. Very much so. See, now I'm bothered. I'm bothered by the fact that they're like, oh, go and master it. It's like, oh, you're gonna make General's Tool? The MMO? That shooty thing I played for a fucking week and was like, this is cancer. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that was bad. 
and then they decided to make rivals. So we basically reached a low point. Everyone who saw, what are you talking uh, about? Don't forget about Tiberium Alliance is the web browser everyone game. Everyone who saw Tiberium Alliance was a low point. No rivals is because at least Tiberium Twilight was not paid to win. Tiberium Twilight. You have to grind. You have to grind to unlock units in the campaign and the multiplayer. It was, sick. It was, oh. really sick. It was horrible. <laughs> in any way, and, and the worst thing is, the only thing that was decent, I say decent, not good, was the music. They even okay, good. I was about ready to shoot you in the head. Just kidding. Wouldn't know. The are okay. just It was not Common Conquer music, but it was... It wasn't it was Command and Conquer Conquer music, but the OST was well composed. Yeah. Uh, and they managed, somehow managed to turn Kane into fucking E.T. Oh, God. Stop. I've already bitched about that enough. <laughs> I've already... The fact that Kane turned into E.T. and was like, I won't go home. It's like that. So he committed mass genocide and he's misunderstood. Okay, got it. <laughs> got it. Yeah. Oh, because oh, in Tiberian Son of Kane wins, he fucking activates the sun and which it turns the fucking planet into the giant Tiberium crystal. Yeah, but he um, changes humanity from carbon to Tiberian base, so it's, it heavily implies that he did not kill humanity. He didn't kill humanity, but he fucking he morphed us into Tiberium, Tiberium life forms. Mm -hmm. And then they but threw out that storyline. God, the story got weird in 3 because he wanted weird things, but he still yeah, kind of wanted the same was, thing. Yeah, 3 was where they read con most of the stuff. Because in the first one and the second one, it's like, ah, oh, yes, Tiberium will control the world. First one's like, you know, slightly secular private organization. The second one, you know, Kane's obviously becoming more of a cult. You got giant pyramids dedicated to him and shit. And he's like executing people like Kane lives in death. You know, all that cool shit. Peace through power. Uh, yeah, peace through power. Peace I through mean, power. <laughs> I always tried to run to him. Uh, even though I did kind of prefer to see the eye. Oh, dude, I, I'm GDI all the way. I just like the memes of Kane. The memes of I mean, Nod. You're not particularly the sneaky guy, so. No, I don't do sneaky stuff. I build big GDI. giant bases, and I'm like, bitch, you ain't getting in. You ain't getting in. The thing is, calm down. Calm down, Fairman. Take a deep breath. Good boy. Now, we have two poles. Uh, you know what? We could probably turn this into a podcast at some point. We're going to start doing live podcasts eventually on the channel. Uh, but we got uh, two polls for you guys to take a look at. And if you guys could, uh, you know, let us know what you like in there. You can leave a comment. Vote for what you want. I'm going to forward them to EA. Whether or not they listen, I don't know. But, hey, it doesn't hurt to try. As long with this video as well about this discussion and as well as your comments. So anything and everything, you know, go ahead and vote. We got the two polls. The first poll you're going to see is... Um, what Command and Conquers would you like to see, you know, remade or remastered or workable or hell, even finished? Uh, and you can check multiple as you want them. I mean, I'd practically check all of them, but that's just me. But I'll be a little bit realistic. I'll check like only two. Um, the next poll is more in regards to what in terms of the remaster, a more realistic poll. Uh, change nothing. Just make it run on modern machines. You know, don't, don't touch nothing. Just get it to work. Improve the UI, you know. Fix the UI, make it more workable, you know, maybe not so clutter. Uh, improve the visuals and, and audio as well. Maybe make it switchable so you can switch between, you know, the classic and the remastered at will. That was really cool about Halo Remastered. I'd love to see that in this one. Uh, yeah, that was nice touch. It was really nice. Uh, balance, now this is, again, you don't have to vote for them if you don't want them, because I know some people, this is getting into to territory where people are going to start getting whingy. Balance units for multiplayer, i.e. units, weapons, buildings, cost for things, production, damage output, etc. Make so, the fucking Iron Cannon naturally useful. The Iron Cannon at Tiberium Dawn is fucking garbage. <laughs> uh, I can't even dest destroy the construction yet. What does not have? Yeah, a nuke that basically blows up two screen sizes and everything. Uh, the nuke, I don't think it's that widespread. Then again, I have modded my Tiberium Dawn, so it runs in like fucking... 90, 20 times 10, 80, and everything's fucking puny. <laughs> and then um, Red Alert, the nuke was just... Couldn't even kill a fucking tank. Like, the nuke is fucking garbage. The super weapons are all over the board. They only come into conquers. Also, Red Alert 2, the, the, the weather control device sucks. Nah, it, it wasn't that 
doesn't Man. like sometimes it's RNG and so it does like it's like crap. At least the nuke is guaranteed to fuck up shit, you know. Um. But not the nuke code and um. No, not the nuke. And yeah, the weather control device was a bit wonky, but. It had a 50-50 of being useful. Don't forget the psychic dominator. This one was a special one. That one was kind of like a little nuke that controlled units underneath it. Yeah, everything inside that got permanently mined up, which was nice. It was a nice little cancerous device. Especially if you managed to sneak one in uh, multiplayer. Uh, now let's see what else. Provide servers for multiplayer. I think that's a definitive yes. You don't hit check on that, I'm gonna slap you. Or at least give um, some option like dedicated server. Yeah, so we can use like fucking uh, Evolve or anything. Just some sort of net coding or something to work with. And preferably improved, because some of the lag can be a little special. Especially playing cross-continental, let us tell you. Um, new robust modding tools for modders, so they can, you know, we can see maybe Mental Omega Team, you know, come in and add their shit to the mix. Or the Twisted Interaction, or whoever, really. They yeah. come in, start adding mods to the new ones. Um, another thing and is I to... cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. Do not touch the music. Maybe touch it up, but don't change the music. Well, they should have a toggle option. You can toggle, if they do remaster the music, you need to be able to switch. Yeah. Also, an MP3 player, the old Command & Conquer's had one. You can yes. go in the options, fucking music is important in Command & Conquer. Hell, I'd argue music's important in every game, especially like games like Halo, not to reference the other one, not to remember. I mean, Command & Conquer wouldn't be Command & Conquer without Frank to pack his music in it. That was... Yeah, you know, you thing. need Frank Kopaki, because Frank Kopaki helps us. You need Joe Kuken, you need Frank Kopaki. The only exception for Red Alert 2 could get away without Joe. Yes, because, well, he wasn't really on... on site. I mean, he wasn't too much inside that. Yeah. But even then, like, honestly, just have Joe cameo. He was also, he was involved because he was, uh, if I recall, uh, the cutscene director. Mm hmm. They're always, the cutscenes are always nice, quirky, and cheesy, and that good sort of full game sense. And it's also good to have him on board because he'll bring him back in that old vibe. The, what captured the audience to begin with. You need Joe on board. And we need that... Oh my god. I don't know why it bothered me so much with Command & Conquer 3, Tiberium Wars. I actually didn't like the fact that the armor wasn't big and bulky and derpy looking. It bothered me. It bothered me when they modernized it. Like, modernize the game, but keep the aesthetic, if that makes sense. Keep that bulky look that... You know, if you do re reboot the franchise, don't reboot it in modern times. Reboot it in the 90s, where, where the first Command & Conquer took place. So we got that, you know, cheesy camo... You know, that crappy television switching channels thing in the beginning. Stuff oh, like yeah. that. And to keep the units. Well, basically, I have an Abrams tank because that was uh, next to the freaking mammoth. Yep, the Abrams was next to the mammoth. One other thing modernize uh, older CNC games with waypoints and attack move buttons. That's another option to vote for. You know? Just modernize the UIs, maybe clean up, you know, the buttons so it's more modern. Uh, that's, that's one thing that sucks about remastering. Maybe make it optional, I don't know. I think I've always been a big proponent in terms of game design, in terms of optional mechanics, and enabling and disabling features as a switch. Now, it's really up to EA whether they're going to follow through with this and how they're going to do it, but this might be them turning a new leaf, and I'm open to believing for a sliver of a hope for the sake of Command & Conquer, if nothing else, that maybe we'll get to see something new. Maybe we'll get to see something remastered. Maybe we'll get to see Command & Conquer revived. A franchise that's been dead for so long. And if they're going to start reviving Command & Conquer, this could be a good thing. If EA sees this as a success, we might see the revival of Dead Space. We might see the revival of Black and White. We don't know. So, it's... I see the revival of the RTS genre. Or even Dungeon be... Keeper. Like, it's the RTS genre as well. Because, let's be honest, Blizzard kind of dropped the ball with making StarCraft any bit of interesting. It was just kind of a eSport thing. And eSport was a mistake. Do not go down that. eSports is an absolute mistake. And it's absolutely bad to Command & Conquer. I don't think eSports did any good for Command & Conquer. At all. I mean, I, I was pretty good. That, that's just my personal opinion, though. I got my hype on it. I never cared for it. Well, they should have ranked. They should have competitive play. But uh, don't... That don't, don't make that a priority. It, I've, ne e I've never saw a Command Conquer that way, though. Yeah, no. Everyone that played a game like in ranked, like any MOBA or something like Overwatch, can pretty much 
probably confirm that playing ranked is not fun anymore. It turns into work. It's stressful and it makes you angry. Very angry. Yeah, and you add tilt and you add tilt to a strategy game that's supposed to you know, be fun and engaging and, you know, enticing your strategic levels. Because Command Conquer is by no means a super, like, intensive strategy game. It's a, it's, a, it's no grand strat, but it is a great, like, real-time strategy. One of the best. Today. Also, if, if it's um, eSport um, focused, you lose access to some quite, uh, let's call it funky tactics, you, which are fun to use, which can be infuriating if used against you, but overall are entertaining to watch. And most eSport balance focused games don't have stuff like this. Yep. Because be serious now. Yeah. I agree. But I think that'll wrap that up there. Anything, any other comments you want to add to Command & Conquer this discussion? Um, Yuri is master. Of course, you fucking nerd. Anyways, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we bid you all a good day. And until next time, see you later.